That is a collaborative project between artists Anna Dunhill and Renee Coles. Working together since 2014, Renee and Anna make socially engaged and performative artworks that explore themes of feminism, protest and bravery. They have recently exhibited a project titled Pockets to Hold the Things We've Been Holding as part of the group show Notions of Care at Bus Projects. For this project, they invited each artist in the show to contribute a significant item for which they collaboratively created a pocket. Please welcome to the show, Renee and Anna. Hello. Hello. Hi. Thanks, Thanks for having us. us. We're very excited to talk about this work because we just loved the work in the space. It was just a very um, evocative yeah. and kind of um, beautiful, beautifully crafted work, mm. considering your past work as a group or as a duo. It's been very kind of large scale participatory performances, um, often with many kind of uh, pieces of ephemera that kind of remain after the event. But this series, this pocket series, you've exhibited at Bus Projects is quite a, a different style, I guess, of project in that in its kind of feel that it's a much more kind of intimate and kind of self-contained work. So your past work has been public and very outward facing. This has been a very intimate and kind of self-contained kind of ecology to it. So can you tell us a little bit about what inspired the Pocket series and how it was all developed? Uh, yeah, our work has definitely changed a lot. We, um, we, we, to go right back to the beginning, we started collaborating because we ran an artist-run initiative together called Paper Mountain for a few years and um, we both sort of left around the same time and were so excited that we weren't doing admin all the time anymore and decided to keep working together but creatively and it kind of just blew up really quickly. We started with one project where we made two boats and then we got invited to do other things and we sort of found ourselves in a, this rhythm of making really big public works quickly um, back to back. We did that for a few years and then... Uh, so they kept getting bigger, they kept being more people and more craft objects and less time and... We both, yeah. uh, we text each other all the time now saying, had another Snapcat nightmare, had to make a giant paper mache something something and there were all these people there and... We had to make up chants for everyone to do and we hadn't <laughs> written them yet and it was overdue that kind of thing so it sort of snowballed a bit <laughs> yeah 100 and the very last one um that we did in perth we're from perth i should say um was a very large scale community project working with all different kinds of women's and girls groups um and it was at uh, an oval and it was to celebrate the launch of the women's afl so that was by far, it was for Perth International Art Festival, the sort of biggest scale we'd done. And then literally the next week, Anna moved to Melbourne, I moved to Sydney, and that was, <laughs> it was, um, it was quite was bizarre, like really. The chapter. Yeah. Um, we did do one more project together after that in Brisbane, um, but we basically went up there and developed the work there and, and then presented it there. Mm -hmm. um, and then Anna went into doing a master's and her work took a very, um, uh, textile um, focused approach and I studied design and uh, in my course the part I got obsessed with was craft and I found myself also at textiles so yeah it wasn't necessarily something we expected um, um, so she finished that over a year ago and we were sort of like hmm should we do a thing yeah. so uh, we started uh, talking about what what we could do and we'd both listened to this great episode of um, articles of interest yeah yes <sighs> the episode about pockets and we it started an obsession yeah we were so fascinated and about the history of pockets particularly women's pockets and yeah. how um, for a few centuries women would wear pockets tied around their waist um, hidden underneath their skirts as like an external um, like piece of clothing almost wasn't yeah it? they weren't built into the skirts the skirts and petticoats just had layers of had like slits to put your hands through to get to the pockets and but they were also these pockets often very very beautifully adorned um beautifully embroidered um often you know 
wealthy women would have really fine like silk and beautiful materials even though these were really only for you and whoever dressed you and possibly whoever undressed you (laughs) (laughs) who might see them um they're really really interesting objects and so yeah we were very um yeah tossing around ideas of how to um how to kind of incorporate this interest and research into a body of work and also how to work between two cities because that was something that we we never intended to stop collaborating when we both simultaneously left Perth and it just was very hard we found to not make work with the kind of work we were making which is a lot of planning and a lot of like throwing around weird ideas and getting into the paper mache late at night not to be in the same space was really really hard yeah we Um, tried for that brisbane project to to have sort of some like studio sessions over um it was kind of pre being big i can't remember what we used let's call it skype um And it just didn't work. Like it was really we'd, flat. We'd, we we'd really never had energy. this a block like that before when we'd worked together in Perth, mm-hmm. where it, you know one of us might have an idea and it would just fall flat. And it's like, what, like I don't know that the ball just didn't keep bouncing. It just there was, which yeah. we hadn't experienced before. So we ended up giving up and go and deciding we're just gonna have to make it together in Brisbane, which did work fine. Like yeah, we hadn't yeah. lost the magic. It just yeah. <laughs> one didn't just <laughs> couldn't to be get in the through the cameras. Yeah. yeah. Um but, so yeah, when we started thinking about pockets, uh I think when we actually decided to start collaborating, Anna suggested that we work on something and actually post it back and forth. Um so we started doing that with uh while Anna was in Melbourne I uh, sorry in in uh this in place Sydney. Sydney where I live um there is this amazing series of craft op shops um called the Achieve Sewing Basket and they there are three outlets um anyone who makes any kind of textile craft needs to go to at least one of them because it is such a treasure and so I took Anna to one of them and we found this strange set of pockets they were sort of they didn't look exactly like the historical ones but they were definitely pockets and they were joined together we still don't really know what they are um it was was possibly a piece of a costume or something like that but we decided to take one each we snipped the cord between the two and took one each and both started uh, working on them and sending them back and forth every was it month yeah, well, like approximately. Yeah. That was our optimistic. And then the next week, the pandemic started. So then our timelines did get a little, you know. But um, but that was the goal. Yeah, and we did send them. We sent them back and forth quite a few times, and, and kind of just added to them. And that was a good kind of, I don't know, like a sketch, sketching, propositional way of working, and it worked. Yeah, really well. And it's interesting with like the posting because it's like there's a delay, so it's like weird time passing. So it's like condensed, condensed like time, and then it kind of stretches out, and then it's like mm. comes in waves, I guess. Mm. So it's interesting that it's like, um, I guess with your past work, it's been kind of very, uh, it's an event based thing, I guess. So it's just like suddenly all these things come together and it, and it happens, and it's very instantaneous. Rather so than this is kind of more of a, a cumulative thing over time, which is kind of an interesting uh, way of kind of. Uh, producing collaborative work. How important, I suppose, is the that sort of like process in like the crafting of the pockets? And like, do you consider all, that whole process of sending stuff back and forth, like in your conception of the work, that is that whole, that whole part of it contained in it? Or like, you know, is it just a finished object that you consider the work or because you it's, you know, more of a performative, I suppose, like not yeah. outwardly performative, but you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, um, I don't know, for me, I mean, we might have different answers to this as well because um, we haven't necessarily discussed all of these kind of things in detail post finishing the work. I mean, I think it was important that we both had um, input into all of the pockets. Um, on some of them, we had a kind of roughly equal amount or we that the original idea for these um, objects was that we... We each would start with three objects. We we both put it um, th- that were given to us by artists, or we, we both put one in as well. Um, and then so we started with the other person's object, and then two others, and we would both start making something. 
in response to those objects. And then halfway through, we would kind of swap and the other person would finish the, um, finish the process. And we might not, you, like for one of them, for example, Renee um, made these beautiful kind of, I think of them as like stained glass windows, but she um, uh, patchworked together these tiny scraps of fabric um, with a stitch called Parachute Ranger's Stitch. Oh is yeah, that, that is correct? what it's called, yeah. Um, which is... Which I always I forget, love. I have to look it up. Yeah, um, and... And, and yeah, and, and made these panels and, and then cut them into the shape of a bottle and stitched that into another piece of fabric. And so when I got that, um, it was just two, two panels, two, um, two, two, two pieces of fabric with bottle shapes um, stitched into them in, in, with these fabric scraps. I'm not explaining that terribly well. So. Um, but yeah, to, to receive those and see how much time and care had gone into them and how precise every stitch was and then be sort of trusted to uh, to do them justice in the finished product and to, you know, it, it's that thing of care really. I think that's a big part of where, one of the ways that care really came into this particular project with, with the work um, that we did at BUS where part of it was, yeah, treating the other person's work with, with enough care. Um, as well as obviously making an object that embodied the so making a pocket that embodied the a care of the object within it um, that the artist who eventually will receive it back with their object would be happy to own. <laughs> um, but so that was a bit of a tangent to your question. But I suppose sorry. But I said well I suppose it wasn't really because really that the process that did feel like a really big big part of it. How did you feel about that? Yeah, it didn't end up um, playing out exactly as we mm. imagined, partly because when we divided the objects, Anna had one that she had no idea what to do with and I had one. So we ended up swapping them because I had an idea for the one she had and she really liked the one I had. Um, but that aside, our original plan was, as Anna said, to start working on it but stop sort of ha at a halfway point, which was a bit hard to determine, but basically to create an incomplete vessel of some mm. kind for the object so it felt like um that was like a really interesting constraint that would would never have occurred to us when we worked together in the same room um to have that kind of um stopping point and this is where I start where you, and this is where you start um, yeah. but it worked really well for this project because it's so inspiring to be handed something that has been um created already and to be able to uh, take that inspiration and actually make something in response. Mm. It's um, it was I think we both really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, like Anna made this uh, beautiful basket from a cord she um, made from dandelion stems um, for my little bottle of um, of gold, little tiny little gold nuggets. Um, dandelion being something that she could uh, get in great quantities but also a symbol for uh, wealth and, and also health because the bottle was a little aspirin bottle so it's just like this perfect this conceptual masterpiece <laughs> um, <laughs> and she wove this really fine gold thread in as well so it was just such a beautiful thing to respond at first I like put it immediately back in and was like I'm not gonna be able to make anything good enough for that but eventually I I got there. <laughs> so do when you were selecting the materials to make all these pockets, like you were saying that the dandelion represents um, health and wealth and all, like did all of the materials kind of have those kind of um, connotations or connections to the object? Like how did you um, choose the design and the materials for the pockets for each object? For me, a lot of the materials were things that I've been playing with in my, in the studio anyway. Um, things like using natural dyes, like plant, different plant dyes and playing with um, plant, plant fibres. So I was kind of playing with the dandelion stem, the dandelion cord and, and just kind of realised that it would be a really perfect material to work with for that. But for other objects, it was maybe more formal or more instinctual um yeah for me anyway or or responding to color or 
that sort of thing. Yeah, I think Anna's practice, um, she, she works a lot with natural dyes and natural fibres and um, I think those things are like a really key part of her practice. Um, whereas I'm a little bit, I err a little bit towards the side of going, oh, it's shiny. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think uh, my choices were aesthetic choices largely. Um, uh, but it was... I think what Anna brought to the project in in her kind of um, alchemic, uh, you know, natural dyes and the way that she makes all those things from from natural phenomena, um, I think that ended up being in every single pocket, and it was it was beautiful. So I'm glad it wasn't all just glitter and sparkles. <laughs> <laughs> the sparkles so the... were minimal. But similarly for me. Um, you know, it's really important that when we work together, I think what happens is it's not either one of us. We do things that neither one of us would make alone. We make something new that we can only make together, and that's happened kind of throughout our practice. Um, but, yeah, being being able to kind of open up to using materials that I have, um, haven't been using in my practice and being a bit more, like, open and free and mixing things that I wouldn't necessarily have combined if it was a work that I was making on my own um, that that was really nice as well. I can imagine you there were times when you're like I could just keep going and finish this <laughs> completely I'm um, getting so wrapped up in you know what I'm doing. Yeah well, I think with that basket Anna did that because she made like what she made was bigger than the bottle so I was like it's just it's finished like <laughs> but I always assumed you would make a lid of some kind so <laughs> yeah it was very hard um to stop and to um to, to let something go and know that you had no control over how it would turn out I mean obviously trusting each other but and I think we did sort of those half that half and half kind of way of working for three or four of them but some of them just because largely of timing and um and and who had ideas about what like the uh there's a long uh thin tube that I crocheted and um I just finished I got to a point and I was like I don't know whether to give it to you and I don't know what like whether it's better to, for me to just finish it because like what could uh Anna do to this long tube you know like <laughs> So we ended up deciding I would finish it, but then she would dye the tube. So it's kind of like mm. we, we sort of, there are a few that were like that and we mm. kind of, we got there in the end, but it meant I didn't actually have to stop, which was very satisfying. And Anna, just on the natural dyes and um, dandelion stems, like they are so interesting as crafting materials. Um, how has your sort of exploration of those developed? Well, something that we've both been interested in and concerned with is like sustainability in textiles. And when I started reading more about textile production and kind of realising the, um, the dyeing and finishing of textiles is hugely um, unsustainable um, in general. And so uh yeah so, so wanting to know more about natural dyes from that point of perspective um and then sort of I, I, th I feel like I sort of went backwards through textile production in terms of the processes I was using because for a while a long time I was embroidering on fabric and then I decided to start weaving so I could make the fabric and then I thought I would dye the threads um and then I sort of got to a point where I was like all right well I want to learn how to spin so I can also make the thread um and looking into yeah so learning to spin with wool and then looking into kind of different ways of making cord and string and and that sort of thing that's been the kind of progression um yeah so so a lot of the things that i used were yeah like scraps and bits you know there were um yeah fa fabric that i'd dyed previously and that hadn't been made into anything but it felt really right for this project to, to bring small things together into something new. Hmm. Yeah, I think my uh, concerns in the sustainability um, area have been understanding more about production um, 
and uh, also like uh, I'm really into visible mending and that kind of um, movement so that's that's been a really nice intersection of um, me studying design for a few years and ending up there and Anna diving into this world of natural dyes and things it's been a really nice meeting point for mm. us yeah moving forward do you have any sort of uh, idea of like continuing this sort of pocket series or going into um, you know waiting to see what the next sort of spark is we are planning to make more pockets um yeah but i think there, there was something about the ability to contain something that really appealed to both of us and having those objects to start with was really nice um when we were thinking when i was thinking about the relationship to our previous work and kind of realizing that well, first of all, the fact that pockets come in a pair is really, um, uh, it, it really, we've, a lot of our works have been pairs of things because there's two of us and we've liked to make sort of matching costumes and we made two boats, they were single person boats, another kind of vessel. Um, and, and that has sort of been a bit of a theme, yeah, throughout the different projects we've worked on. Um, but it was really lovely to be able to work in both the participatory aspect where we worked with other people, but also we didn't have to do a huge amount of logistics and wrangling. Um, it was all, as you said, very much more, um, I guess, yeah, interned, but still connecting a group of people without being the need for it to be this loud spectacle um, that took over everyone's lives. <laughs> um, and I think, uh, yeah, felt much, felt for me really, um, really rewarding to be able to still bring in those aspects of our projects, but in this kind of quieter way um, that could unfold kind of more slowly and more poetically. But yeah, we also really thought that all of the objects would look really weird together, like dysfunctional children. Um, but they ended up, even though they were all very different, um, looking like a, a family, which was yeah, really... Yeah, I mean, the way that they were hung in the space really um, sort of tied the whole thing together, I think, really beautifully. And like just the, the effect of like a pocket with a weighted object in it. Yeah, that was all the sort of tying together of the disparate pockets and objects that you needed because, you know, they were just all lined up there and sort of slowly swaying, swaying. in the breeze. <laughs> it's so mesmerizing. To like they were watch. almost like dancing with each other because they were all kind of twirling a different, but like kind of in the same rhythm in, in a way. In the same plane, definitely. Yeah, yeah. and it was just kind of interesting to watch because yeah. they all also seemed to have this, you know, it was the same kind of level of craft uh, that you could see, that yeah. you could see it was, the, you know, um, a cohesive kind of hand across the whole. Or even two, though, four or two hands. Hands. Four <laughs> hands. <laughs> But, you know, there was a cohesive, like there was a conversation happening between all of it. So mm. that was kind of interesting. Definitely. Yeah. Yes. This is probably um, like antithetical to the whole pocket concept, but could the pockets exist without the objects in them or do you see the the pockets completely tied to you know the, the things they were made for I, I don't know what Anna thinks but I think that they have become their own thing I, I think they're almost sculptures that we would have never made without this object but they have become their own entity mm -hmm. um, each of them and the forms that they have ended up being are so interesting to us even though we make them <laughs> because we uh at the at most points throughout weren't really sure what form they would take until we the very end um so yeah I think you could take the object away and, that, and it would still make sense and still be I work. I think in some case, yeah, I think so too, although for some of them the object, having the object inside it does change the, does change the pocket. So for example, I'm thinking particularly of um, 
the, the pocket we made for Kate Tucker's um, compressed foil because the pocket itself is made of this very lightweight silk. And so having the, the foil, which is quite a heavy, we thought when she described it to us um, prior to receiving it, that it was going to be more like kind of our aluminium foil, like, you know, a kind of a lightweight, but it's really, it's got a weight to it. Um, it's really a beautiful object and a strange, a strange object. I love it. Um, but that way, um, and the, and the way, you know, the way it hangs in the silk, um, does, uh, change its form. So yeah. I'm yeah, not... that's true. That, that object has actually become part of that pocket. Yeah. 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 But maybe the others. Some of the others where you can't necessarily see if the object is even in there or, you know, um, yeah, perhaps they can. But in terms of the project we we really wanted them to all um return to the to the owners of the objects so they can store them together or separately or yeah For yeah me, we I wanted like... to give them the option of using it to actually mm. keep their object in if you know mm. if it worked for them <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that, that goes back to our question before about, you know, like, is the process does seem to be the work in itself and the finished product is um, almost like a byproduct of that collaborative, collaborative uh, process. process. Yeah. yeah. And the making of the pocket is the project, you know? Yeah. Which is yeah. Mm -hmm. It does feel like that. I actually um, was telling someone about it yesterday and we've had quite a few nice messages, including you guys getting in touch. and. It was quite a surprise to me because I think to me the process was the work. I was sort of like, why are these? Why do these people keep talking to us about them? Like, <laughs> it just felt like it was done. But it, it's actually been so lovely to um, for us to be done, but for them to now have their moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I guess yeah, part of the because the process is so important. I guess for you, I guess the. Uh, the reading of the work for you guys so have you documented part of the process one of us is notoriously terrible at taking photos um it's me <laughs> i'm sorry <laughs> Anna, but it's true she she gets very immersed I yeah can't whereas i have the attention span of a nap so I often think of taking a photo because I've become distracted again um <laughs> i will say though that that the distance does make some difference because throughout this process I was taking photos of what I was working on so that I could send them to Renee. Um, a thing I would never otherwise do. <laughs> so, uh, so that geography did. has helped. <laughs> yeah, they're not necessarily amazing photos, but they do exist. Um, so yeah, but I, I agree that that yeah, being more um, strategic about tracking that is is important and we really wanted as well in terms of process to include information about what the objects were because you can't see all of them in in the work or, or um, and even if you can see them you don't necessarily know why that the artist had held on to that object yeah or what it is no so in the catalog um, for notions of care we included photographs um, of each of the objects um, being held in one of our hands. Um, and we asked each of the artists to, to write a little bit about why, why each object was important. So yeah, so, so that background and context um, felt um, very important to include. Mm. Yeah, and I mean that as a viewer, I suppose seeing the work that I think is, was a really beautiful way to sort of like be introduced to the pocket and the object and especially when you couldn't see it just like conceptualizing of what it might look like um, and having that sort of little history along with the object is you know the the sort of jumping point for imagination <laughs> about uh, what could be in there and even just why an artist has considered that as a precious object you know it's really interesting because yeah it was funny when I was reading the um, catalog because I, I don't know why I didn't look at the pictures. I just read the <laughs> the stories. So I was imagining what the objects, because I couldn't see them. So I was like imagining the objects. And then I, when I actually eventually saw the pictures, I was like, oh, <laughs> that's what that was describing. So it was kind of funny in the fact that like I just used the words to just imagine 
what it was. And then the pocket was kind of alluding to That's something. That's kind of nice, actually, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's and it's almost, like this mystery behind yeah. it. I think they all allude to the shape in some way. Mm-hmm. That's so interesting. We may uh, take that um, as as feedback for our next project. Maybe <laughs> we don't need to show the object. We can let people create the object in their minds. Yeah. Her, I suppose the pearl um, uh, tube is a little like that. A really, really long uh, yeah, vessel for a tiny pearl. It like comes back to the the like actually actual weight of the object being so f- like formative to the shape of it because you know yeah it's like this tube but the sort of pearl at the end of it if you had a different object in it it would have a different weight to it so mm, you know definitely. it would stretch out that shape more or less or anything so so it's almost <laughs> like yeah that pearl one was like commenting not necessarily about the formal shape of the pearl but how it would drop through air like it was almost mm. like it was tracing it down. So it was like a different aspect of the object rather than say maybe certain objects you're responding to like a shape or a colour or a picture or, you know, like the image rather than I felt like with the pearl it was more like it's action through air or something. Maybe it was just the way it was like strung or something. Yeah, it's very poetic. Like, I know, that's really yes. beautiful. And to, and, and, yeah, I'm telling you, and true. Your work was yeah, very yeah. inspiring. So <laughs> when you think about a lot of things. So um, yeah, so it was kind of like it was almost interesting that it was kind of um, commenting on matter, but on a different aspect of the mat- like of the object. So it wasn't um, you know some of it was like actual like material quality. Some things were like. Mm. Oh, no, an experiential quality rather or, than... Or even, you know, in the um, that mineral fragment, like yes. having that as a little window display was like so lovely to uh, to read about, you know, this this mineral that's found in in like this one specific place in, in the world and then on another planet. And then having it like you could actually see the aspect of it was so lovely as like a little window almost. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. That that um, object, the the pocket that we made for the stitch tie, I made the kind of base of it, and then Renee um, embroidered it, and that was pretty um, directly influenced by the traditional shape of pockets, the the garment. Yeah, and so it was it was quite yeah. It was nice to make a very tiny version that yeah you could just see that sliver. We were very bewitched by that that rock, that piece of yeah. mineral. It was just so beautiful with yeah. these lines of purple through this, like, mm-hmm. bright, vivid green. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah, so did that, um, in that case, did the object sort of inform what sort of housing you would give to it in terms of, you know, wanting to um, showcase those elements of it? Yeah. Yeah, that's it did. And also, I mean, in its in its shape that it really spoke to the teardrop. It's a teardrop shaped piece of rock and that's the kind of shape that the pockets are. But yeah, I think having a little sliver be visible in there that 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 did feel um really not that felt really nice. But I guess yeah, a lot of the time I, I like I don't know that I set out to do that necessarily. It's just kind of how it formed. Um when I made that base and you know obviously Renee responded to that as well with the way that she addressed it afterwards so yeah they've all they, they all started out very speculative very speculatively and have have formed themselves I think in different ways what is your intended future for these objects you know do you have a an idea of how long you would like them to last um, or like you know in terms of working with natural dyes you're obviously aware of the sort of fading properties of them and so like do you accept that sort of inevitable change that will come? These are like quite possibly the most archival of all of the work we've ever made. <laughs> um, but that probably speaks to how carefully everything was considered with them as well. Yeah. It was almost, this work is almost the antithesis of all the other work we've ever made <laughs> in, in yeah. form and process. Yeah, which, yeah, pre- yeah, which, you know, deliberately has been very craft heavy, but using 
you know, straws and hot glue and um, newspaper and, and, and things that are really quick and perishable and, but, you know, can be used to great effect very quickly. Whereas, yeah, this was much more about um, small scale care. Um, and so while the materials, of course, textiles are desperately difficult to look after in the long term, um, maybe that's part of them as well um they're they're relatively fragile but these works are you know they're they're kind of quite comparatively sturdy in terms of how long we would want them to last i mean part of me thinks this because we've we've used aside from like cardboard and stuff we've also used a lot of things that are you know maybe like plastic and glitter and stuff that doesn't break down and so while those individual works aren't going to last those components are, will last oh, wherever they are um in landfill um and so and so i quite like that these precious pockets won't necessarily last forever if they're worn every day they wouldn't they would they would be you know have wear and tear and eventually break down um but i don't think that's a pro well maybe that's part of the life mm. trajectory of these pockets is that maybe they get repaired so it's mm. this continual process of caring so then the pockets evolve yeah, like, how, and how would you like it re repaired? Is it would it be repaired by yourselves or by someone else? Like, is it okay for someone else to do it or the owner of the pocket? Owner of the pocket <laughs> could repair it themselves, mm -hmm. or do you want those repairs to be visible? Mm -hmm. You know, I think one thing that um, is unique to this collaboration is that because everything we make together, neither one of us own it. It's like it becomes this um, this thing that we feel um, very proud of, but it's not the same as when you make something by yourself. Mm -hmm. So often I think, like with uh, the more ephemeral projects, I think we had no consideration of what would really happen to those things and we're just lucky that our collective parents were happy to keep a few things because we have re-shown some things. Mm -hmm. um, but I think in, in terms of this project, because it is all about care, I think... Um, I at least would really love the idea of a conservator just doing what they think needs to be done to care for it. It's like going to the, mm. the next stage of the object's life. Yeah. Like we've, we've cared for the object by making the pocket and now a conservator is caring for the pocket made for the object. Yeah. And similarly, if, if an artist um, who, you know, received one of these pockets wanted to repair it if, if it needed to be, I'd be super excited to see what they did. Um, I, I feel like at that point, I'm yeah really happy to to let go of the ownership. I mean, the the object belongs to them; it's their pocket. So, yeah, seeing how other people might respond to those objects and materials would be really interesting. So yeah, the idea of like having these um, these pieces, which are yeah, they start off with you, but then obviously they're going between both of your hands so the hand of the artist is already blurred shall we say and then you know to have them be able to go on a new trajectory and especially I suppose in working with artists you know that is again inviting new people into the sort of collective of the pockets and you know like especially working in a, in a group show and then inviting the other artists in the group show I feel like you've really made a sort of you're back to like the pockets all tied together that you found in the op shop. Like they're, they're all disparate and they're all in other people's houses now. But, you know, the idea is that they're still always linked together by that sort of thread. Mm. Yeah. And it becomes also in the same way that previous works were very much about large groups of people doing a kind of performance. These, these pockets are all designed to be worn on the body and they could be worn on the body. Um, and so, but those performances are then private and hidden and um, we don't know if they will even happen. We can imagine them. Uh, this has been so lovely. Um, thank you both so yes. much. And thanks for taking the time to talk to us. Um, hopefully 
you found something <laughs> exciting about thought about conservation I don't know absolutely it was a pleasure um it was so nice to hear your reflections on the work that was a real treat so thank you yeah thanks so much it was wonderful to talk to you both